Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name and I'm excited to welcome you to this great time of studying the word of his grace. Invite a friend, we're going to have a blast as we look into the word of God. I have my wife co-hosting the broadcast this morning, Dr. Rachel Damina. Good to see every one of you all. Welcome to the broadcast. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we ask that light shines in the hearts of your people. Their minds illuminated. Clarity comes by the teaching of your word and adjustments taking place to make us the better for the effectiveness in the kingdom. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Today we're looking at the local church part seven. The local church part seven. And we're examining kinds of meetings in the local church. The first kind of meeting is prayer meetings. Mm. These are meetings where the church come together to pray. You know, the Bible says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. So the believer is a house of prayer. Himself, and yes. when we assemble together, we, we become a, a corporate house of prayer. Okay. Look at an example in Acts chapter 4, verse 24 to 31. Honey, read. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. And it continues by saying, who like, by the mouth of David thy servant has said, why did the heathen rage? It's such a blessing to know that when things are not working, you can come to the fellowship of brethren mm. and share with them and they can sincerely pray together with you to see things work. Exactly. The same thing with your persecuted in the course of evangelism. It's a joy to have a company to so go back to, to. Mm. and be strengthened in the place of prayer. So the first thing is prayer meetings. Number mm. two, we have teaching meetings. Mm -hmm. Here, believers are taught to the end that they may understand the truth of God's word. Mm. Acts 20.20. 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Acts 19.9. But, but when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Number three will be believers and Holy Ghost meetings. These meetings give unhindered expression to the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Here there can be teaching briefly, just to put the minds of the people on receiving in the mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. There is revelation, there's utterance, and there's impartation mm -hmm. in believers and Holy Ghost meetings. Mm -hmm. Usually all night, yep. you know. All night, evenings, hours or whatever, something, evenings, but enough time, time for people to flow and express themselves. themselves. Mm -hmm. Very important. First Corinthians 14, 26. How is it then, brethren? When you come together, every one of you had a psalm, had a doctrine, had a tongue, had a revelation, had an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Unto edifying. Yeah. And there's an example in Acts 13, 1 to 3. Certain prophets and teachers in the church that was at Antioch, mm -hmm. and as they fasted and prayed, the, the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost said, mm -hmm. separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. Then they laid hands and sent them forth. Mm -hmm. This is an example of a believer's meeting. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost said was okay, by tongues, tongues and interpretation. An interpretation of tongues. How wonderful is that? You can't have this yeah. in regular two, three hours. And you can't meeting. have this by being alone, alone by too. staying out of local assemblies. Mm. You can't have this. Can't. It has to be within a, a fellowship of to brethren yeah. to be able to receive ministry and to minister to others. It's very important. Praise the Lord. Mm. What a blessing. Father, we pray for viewers today that all of this benefit that comes from fellowship will become real in the hearts of our viewers. We rebuke everything that is contrary, and we ask that everyone watching the broadcast is strengthened, refreshed, renewed, empowered, energized. And as we look into the mirror, adjustments are taking place to make us better for effectiveness in the advancement of the kingdom. And we give you praise for answered prayer today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'd like to encourage you to order the Christocentric meal. Hard copy from our office. The announcer will tell you how to go about it. Digital copies from Amazon Kindle. Dr. Abel Damina. Just before we go, honey, one last word for viewers out so there. So these different kinds of meetings arranged are for your edification, right. they are for your growth, right. they are for your perfecting. Right. Do not neglect them. Keep it in mind. And then encourage others as well to take heed to these things. Very important. Praise God. Mm -hmm. We love you guys. We're excited that we can be a blessing every day, serving you the grace of Christ through the teaching of God's word. So we come again your way tomorrow. This is Rachel and Abel Damina saying that, that the, the kingdom, kingdom of God is in power. Amen. Amen.
have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? If we neglect. And he says, lest at any time they should sleep. And I've taught you that the world doesn't sleep. It is we that sleep. Lest at any time we should sleep. We are the ones that could sleep away if we neglect so great salvation. The only way to be free from the burden of the law and to be free from legalism is to embrace so great salvation. So the first thing he said is spoken, spoken, the word spoken, then confirmed. So that means Jesus at the first or beginning. The word Akai. Akai is always time or a predominant action or thought. Akai. So we can trace elements of the gospel to the first things Jesus said. And then confirm to us by those who heard. Now, uh, one of the things that could bother you is when you begin to hear that, you begin to wonder, did Jesus really preach the gospel in the four gospels? Well... If you look carefully, he wasn't talking about the four Gospels primarily. And so that is why the word confirmed to us is the Greek word bibaio, B-E-B-A-I-O-O. -O, to ratify and you give further proof to it. And this must be after the resurrection. You know, after the resurrection, Jesus spent 40 days to teach. To bring to their understanding things they never saw or understood before he died. That's what he meant was first spoken by the Lord. The first speaking here was after his resurrection. 40 days, you know, teaching. After his resurrection, when he preached the gospel to them in Luke chapter 24, verse 25, where he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then verse 44 to 46, read for me. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. 46. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. That was when he preached the gospel. That was when he preached the gospel. That was confirmed by those who heard him. God also bearing them witness. Bearing them witness. Who are the them? Those who heard. Where did he bear them witness? Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And this sign shall follow those that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. In my name they shall heal the sick. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And the Lord was walking with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. So they heard, and because they heard, he walked with them, bearing them witness. Mark 16, 15 to 20. God walking with them, confirming his world with signs following. So we can't find him preaching the gospel in the four gospels. We find him preaching it when he rose. The word Akai. That word is usually to start something and move its influence over time. So Jesus started a teaching pattern in Luke 24, verse 25 to 27. He started a teaching pattern. That teaching pattern now became the predominant pattern of Bible teaching. 
it became the predominant pattern of Bible teaching in the book of Acts and in the epistles. That particular teaching pattern in Luke 24, where Jesus taught for 40 days, became the predominant pattern of Bible teaching in the book of Acts and the epistles. So it becomes the center of the teaching and its influence. So we are looking at the wisdom of God. Now let me quickly summarize a few things. Please pay attention. Pay attention. Let's summarize a few things. Notice that in activities generally, we have three characters. We have God, we have man, we have Satan. In activities generally, three characters. God, man, and Satan. And to always explain things with those characters. We have already established that at the center of all activities is man. At the center of all activities is man. It's in man we find Satan's wisdom, if it exists at all. It's in man also we find God's wisdom. It's in man. Man is the center of all activities. So within the activities of man and God, within the activities, we find man and God in the activities. While Satan reaches the zenith of his wisdom using man's intelligence, the zenith of Satan's wisdom relies on man's intelligence. God reduces his wisdom using man's intelligence. But Satan increases his own to his height. In the height of man's wisdom is Satan's apex. In the height of man's wisdom is Satan's apex. Yet, in the mystery of God, man's wisdom cannot find it out. In the mysterion of God, Man's wisdom cannot find it out. So man becomes the center of activities of both God and Satan. Man becomes the center of that. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. The preaching of the cross. He calls the preaching of the cross the power of God. The preaching of the cross. If you read verse 1 to 25 of that chapter, he talks about the preaching, the message, the message, the gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6, notice the wisdom of God is spoken. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world. That come to naught. Now, just hold on there. We speak wisdom. So the wisdom of God is spoken. Meaning, we have the message of the wisdom of God. Our gospel is the message of the wisdom of God. That's our gospel. Because it is the preaching of the cross. And the preaching of the cross is God's wisdom. So, the wisdom of God is spoken. We speak wisdom. How do we speak wisdom? The message is the wisdom of God. The message. What message? Death, burial, and resurrection. It's called the preaching of the cross. So we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. And somebody says, who are they that are perfect? <laughs> By one offering he has perfected. He has perfected forever them that are sanctified. So you are the perfected people. So we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Now please pay attention. So the wisdom of God is taught. Is taught. And the wisdom of God is preached. We preach God's insight. Not the words which man's wisdom teacheth. So we preach God's insight. That is what brother Paul meant by sunesis. If you remember the Greek word, sunesis in an intelligent way and fashion. We speak the wisdom of God in an intelligent way and fashion. Sunesis. 
Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So he reveals his wisdom to us by the Spirit. Remember, what I had not seen nor ear heard is the wisdom of God. But he reveals them to us by his Spirit. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30, he calls Christ crucified the wisdom of God. The wisdom of this world is found in man. The wisdom of God is found in Christ the man. So both the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God are found in man. Man is the center of this activity. So in studying the wisdom of God, we will look at the activities of man. Like we said, Jesus was crucified by wicked hands. Man's activities. So in wicked hands, we see man's wisdom. And in the same wicked hands, we see God's wisdom. So we will discover God's wisdom in what man calls foolish. For example, to give yourself to die is foolish. But also, to give yourself to die is the wisdom of God. Is wisdom to God. Because to give yourself to die is the expression of God's love. So, it is the love of God that conquers the domain of sin. So, if we begin to look for God's wisdom, after searching and searching for God's wisdom, through the scriptures, we will arrive at the love of God. After all our search for God's wisdom, through the scriptures, we will arrive at the love of God. And that is what is foolishness to the Greeks and weakness to the Jews. The love of God. Foolishness to the Greeks and weakness to the Jews. But unto us that are saved, it is the power of God. Kabayada. Unto us that are saved, what is foolishness and weakness is the power of God. Christ crucified. Praise God. So in man's lowest state of sin, God's answer is love. And God's character has never changed. You know, when people talk about the grace message, it's not a message in as much as it is, but grace is the very DNA of God. The very DNA of God. It is God's character before time. It is God's character in time. It is God's character after time. He never changes. Grace is God's character. It's not just a message. It is God's character. Hallelujah. His love is what he always does. God's character is love. He always functions in love. So the many-sided wisdom of God, Brother Paul calls it the surpassing knowledge of the love of God. To know the surpassing knowledge of the love of God. The love of God that triumphs over justice. You didn't hear that. The love of God that triumphs over justice. The word chesed in the Hebrew. The word chesed. Loving kindness. Two words. Loving and kindness. That is, you demonstrate it. Love, you demonstrate love by kindness chesed loving kindness that is you can see this loving kindness and you can touch it how many of you know we saw god's love and we touched god's love god's love was dispensed in a person what is his name jesus so jesus is god's love dispensed god's love expressed god's love manifested and he walked among men. Men touched him. Men felt him. He didn't only walk among men. He lived in the womb of a sinner. And he ate with sinners. And lived among sinners. 
that is God's love that can be touched and felt. The love of God. And that is the wisdom of God at the same time. That is the wisdom of God at the same time. So love wins. Love wins. That's the mystery of redemption. Love wins. So, when we now say, I will put enmity. I will put enmity. That is hostility. It came from the devil. There can be no hostility in love. It came from the devil. So, what overcame hatred is God's love. So, God's love stripped the devil of his authority. God's love stripped the devil of that authority. So, it's not an after effect persona of God. That is who he is. Love is who God is. It's not an after effect persona of God. That is the exact, that is the center of God. That is God. That's the crux of the matter. So we want to briefly examine a part of him that we talk about and we hear people talk about always. That you will hear people say, yes, God is a God of love, but he is also a God of justice. People like to say such things. Do you know? Don't mind these grace preachers who only preach the love of God and they leave the justice side. They are not balancing God is a God of love, but is also a God of justice. So that justice, we want to examine that justice. Are you ready for this? It's going to be some good travel, so strap your seatbelts. Let's go on this journey, all right? He's a God of love, but also is a God of justice. Now, it is my passion in this day and age to present a single identity of the Father. It is my passion all through the pages of the scriptures in this day and age when there is a cacophony of noises everywhere to present a single identity of the father because that revelation of the father's character is the basis for a vibrant active relationship with God. Until you come face to face with the revelation of the single identity of the father. You cannot trust him. As long as in your mind. God has dual character. You can't trust him. So. Matola beteke. It will not be sound theology. Until the single character of God. Is defended. Across the 66 books of the Bible. And we're about to have an adventure. Today and the next few days. God punish the devil. Because this is a very big challenge. In many theological and religious circles. God is a God of love. But he's a God of justice. Yes. He loves you but he cannot tolerate nonsense. If you do nonsense, he will destroy you. If you do nonsense, he will destroy you. Hmm. Any God that has the potential to destroy cannot be trusted. You can't trust him. What do you know? Huh? Uh. If you are married to a wife, that you think can kill you. You can't trust her. Can you? When she gives you water. You will tell her. Oh I'm okay. Even if you're thirsty. Is it not true? Ah, me and mama were talking the other day. And she said to me. Ah, a woman can easily kill her husband. Though. We were just thinking about life. You know generally. Because the way husbands trust their wives. You travel. You come back. They put something in front of you. You wipe it. Without checking or asking questions. You know why? Because you trust her. 
she doesn't have dual character you have been with her and you have established trust in the consistency of her love same thing with a husband a husband that has the tendency to batter his wife's face and damage her body in the name of correction that woman cannot trust that man even if she pretends brother she doesn't trust you she's just she's just pretending for you because there are other reasons why she's staying in that marriage she doesn't trust you i'm the one telling you take it from me Hello, I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs, and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer.